When AMD Navi was first released in July of 2019, it gave the impression that AMD's graphics cards were making a comeback to their former glory. It was not only able to compete with Nvidia at the same price range, but it was truly triumphant, despite Nvidia's sophisticated RTX technology being absent from the product. The AMD Radeon 5500 XT is a card designed with 1080p in mind, but is it a GPU you should purchase in 2022? Let's find out. RX 5500 XT Features and Specs The RX 5500 XT received some criticism shortly after its release due to problems with its drivers. However, the problems have since been resolved, and we are in possession of a 1080p graphics card capable of meeting the needs of PC gamers who prefer AMD to the industry leader, NVIDIA. The AMD Radeon RX 5500 XT shares the same RDNA architecture as the RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT graphics cards. However, you shouldn't anticipate the same degree of hardware inside because this is a GPU aimed at a more budget style audience. The RX 5500 XT GPU uses a small die measuring 158 millimeters that only contains 1408 cores and 88 texture units. This is roughly 40% fewer than the RX 5700. There is also half as many ROPs, which reduces the memory bus from 256 bit down to an 128 bit wide. Memory bandwidth is reduced to 224GB a second as a result. AMD maintained the GDDR6 memory, and the 5500 XT is available for purchase with either 4GB or 8GB of video RAM. But for the sake of this review, we will be concentrating on the 8GB design. Back to the cores. They have a base clock speed of 1670MHz and a boost clock speed of 1845MHz. This indicates that their base clock speed is actually 7% greater than that of the 5700. However, there are a lot fewer cores, so the TDP is just 150 watts. The 8GB version of the 5500 XT came in at $200 according to MSRP, but on retail platforms you can get it from prices ranging from $170 to $350, which to be honest seems a little bit too ambitious given the hardware specifications. The 4GB variant had a manufacturer's suggested retail price of $170, which once again seems like an excessive amount of money for a 4GB graphics card in 2019. Retail outlets often chain, charge somewhere between the region of $140 to $250 for the 4GB GPU. Gaming Performance TechSpot tested the GPU by putting it through the paces in 8 games running at 1080p and 1440p, with presets or settings ranging from medium to high quality. The graphics processing unit testing equipment was driven by a Core i9-9900K with a clock speed of 5GHz and 16GB of DDR4-3400 memory. While testing the 5500 XT, they used the Gigabyte RX 5500 XT gaming OC. Let's take a look at the results. Shadow of the Tomb Raider First up we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and the 5500 XT managed an average of 77 frames per second when playing the game at 1080p resolution and with the high quality option activated. This performance wasn't terrible, but it wasn't very impressive either, considering the RX 590 was a touch quicker and the 1660 Super was about 20% faster. Even when they played at 1440p, the results were largely the same, and despite having more VRAM, the 5500 XT cannot compete with the 1660 Super. Assassin's Creed Odyssey We can see that the 5500 XT is able to outperform the RX 590 in Assassin's Creed Odyssey by achieving an average of 71 frames per second. This results in being 4% quicker, which translates to a difference of just 3 frames per second. However, the 5500 XT was 8% quicker than the GTX 1650 Super. The GTX 1660 Super was 11% faster than the GTX 1650 Super. At 1440p, we can see a comparable margin. The 5500 XT is still on par with the GTX 1660, which places it on par with the RX 590 and the GTX 1650 Super. Hence, this is not an excellent outcome for the AMD card. World of Tanks when playing World of Tanks, the 5500 XT was able to deliver 106 frames per second on average in 1080p. This placed it on par with the RX 590 and matched the performance of the 3GB 1060. The 1440 performance of the 5500 XT is not significantly improved in this resolution. It is a little bit slower than the RX 590 and not significantly better than the much more affordable GTX 1650 Super. Far Cry New Dawn the performance of the 5500 XT in Far Cry New Dawn is typical of what we have seen so far. It is a tad bit speedier than the 590 and around 6% faster than the 1650 Super, which to be honest is a very dismal outcome given how pricey the 5500 XT really is. At 1440p, there is not much of a difference. The 5500 XT and the 590 are tied for the first place while the GTX 16 Super is miles ahead of the pack and delivers about 20% better performance. Rainbow Six Siege Rainbow Six Siege still had a very good frame rate when played at 1080p with a very high quality preset, which is one step down from ultra setting. 
The GPU performed well, even though the 5500 XT was still slower than the RX 590 and was not significantly quicker than the more affordable GTX 1650 Super. The results were essentially the same when testing was done at 1440p. The 5500 XT could only keep pace with the GTX 1650 Super and the RX 590. Call of Duty Modern Warfare the Call of Duty Modern Warfare is pretty comparable to what we've seen so far. The RX 590 and the GTX 1650 Super are roughly comparable to that of the 5500 XT in terms of performance. The 5500 XT cannot overtake the 1650 Super at any resolution, not even 1440p, however it seems to still fall behind the 590. Metro Exodus The ultra quality option was used for testing with Metro Exodus. The 5500 XT finished in second place behind the RX 580 and it was also 10% behind the 590 in terms of speed. The 5500 XT dropped to an average of 51 frames per second when the resolution was increased to 1440p. This meant it was a few frames slower than the RX 580, but at least in the game it was despite a deal quicker than the 1650 Super. Should you get an RX 5500 XT? Overall, the RX 5500 XT is an excellent 1080p graphics card, and this is true regardless of whether you are on a budget or not. If you are still using one of the NVIDIA's GTX 1050 Ti GPUs or an older AMD Radeon RX card and are starting to feel a bit of strain, then the 5500 XT is the right solution for you. However, there is no reason for you to get the RX 5500 if you already own a GTX 1060, an RX 580, or a RX 590. Unfortunately, both variants of the RX 5500 XT trail behind competitors such as Nvidia's GTX 1660, which is in the same price range as the 5500, but offers significantly improved performance across the board when it comes to video games. While the GTX 1660 offers marginally superior performance, the GTX 1660 Super on the other hand comes in at a slightly higher price point but is able to handle a much bigger workload than the 5500. There you have it, the 5500 XT. Is it worth buying in 2022? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please like, subscribe, and let us know down below if you want to see us do more reviews on more GPUs and what, what GPUs you guys are interested in. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. We'll see you boys in the next one. Peace out.